say that our quality of education is below expectations. And compared to other countries, we're far behind from being internationally competitive. Is the addition of two years to our nation's education system a solution to this problem? Or will this addition delay this country from development and further separate us from the rest of the world? Is the K plus 12 program our solution in achieving higher standards of learning? When in the Philippines, only 14 out of 100 students graduate from college. However, the path which these students want to set forth on is unclear. Under the Education Act of 1982, the average student goes through six to seven years in elementary and four years in high school. This will change if the new program K plus 12 will be implemented as proposed by the Department of Education of the Philippines. Based on their K-642 model, learning will start from kindergarten, six years in primary education, and another six years in high school. The additional two years will include specialized subjects like science, technology, business, and agriculture. Is it not the time spent on learning, but the quality itself the problem? Is uh, both um, we are looking at a quality kind of education in K plus twelve, um, which means that that quality of education will only be delivered in a span of twelve years. There are what we're saying is there are lots of basic competences that ought to be taught not only in ten years but really in twelve years. When it comes to the international test, our students are falling behind. For example, in 2003, the TIMSS, or Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study. The Philippines ranked 43rd out of 46 participating countries in the science category. And in the mathematics category, we ranked 34th out of 38 participating countries. Under the Southeast Asian countries, the 2003 scale scores of 8th graders in the science category, Singapore was at the top with an average of 578, compared to the Philippines who scored the lowest with an average score of 377. And in the math category, Singapore was still the highest with an average score of 605, and the Philippines still at the bottom with an average score of 378. We think that the curriculum is digested, meaning there are many competences taught to the children in elementary and also in the secondary level in such a way that they could not master those skills. Another goal of the K-12 program is to catch up the international standards. In Asia, Philippines is the only country that uses a 10-year education program. In the world, some African countries use the program as we do. That's why our graduates are not recognized abroad. A survey was conducted on the public response towards the reform. Second year students of the Philippine Science High School Diliman campus took part in the survey. Results showed that 33 out of 50 students disagreed to the said reform, and the remaining 17 students agreed. This survey proved that more than half do not feel that there is a need for a reform or do not think it is necessary. Poverty is the number one problem in this country. With the addition of two years in the system of education, won't this make matters worse? No. Okay, we know that an additional years in schooling would really impact on expenses of the parents for the children. We know that they have to add on the expenses for the transportation, the baon, and also 
maybe the projects and others. But with the assurance that if the child, if that person or the student will finish two years and he is ready to get the job, so up in the in the long run it will still be beneficial to the family, even with an additional of two years. We call it minus two because an additional of two years will really. Uh, will really ensure that that child has mastered the skills for employment or entrepreneurship rather than now where two years college and even four years college are, re are required in order for one to become According to statistics, about 71% of unemployed are at least high school graduates. The reason, high school graduates do not possess the basic competencies or emotional maturity, which is essential for the world of work. While the availability of economic opportunities contributes to this, it also illustrates the mismatch in the labor and education markets. Further, most graduates are too young to enter the labor force. This implies that those who do not pursue higher education would be unproductive or vulnerable to labor practices. The important reason is we would like the students who graduate from the, that level or grade 12 to be ready for employment because they will be 18 years old, 17 or 18 year, years old in the finish and they could be contracted for work. Another one is that curriculum would allow us to really let the students choose the career they would like to be engaged in grade 9. So 9, 10, 11, and 12, and they will be able to specialize whatever career they would like to go to. Hence, they will be good workers, uh, become good employees. In the increasing number of students dropping out from school, would the implementation of this program give a solution or would it worsen the situation? Whether there is a pay plus well or there, there is none, we are looking at the problem as an Iberian one. In absence of pay plus well, the trend is the dropout rate is really increasing. The cost of the dropout rate is really, for, for we have high dropout rate in grades 1, 2, and 3. It's because the children are malnourished and they are sickly. And if these are the problems, it means it's not, it's not really only lack of teachers, but the, condition, the family situation or the economic condition. We really have to make the parents be aware that children should be born with quality life. And I think this is so, it's because many of the parents are having lots of children. But what we're doing now is we have a project that looks at supplementary feeding. Meaning the children are given free breakfast we have from Jollibee. We have also local government units together with the parents and the schools when they are raising vegetables in the schools or where there are, you have like Lugao. And these are supplementary feeding that are given to, to children, especially in grades 1, 2, and 3. What we're saying is you could never have a reading intervention, not unless you have an intervention for nutrition and also for physical health. With the shortage of teachers, who will be qualified to teach for the additional two years in specialization? We have now some options. Uh, we, there's one option. Option one is the two years will really, uh, the two years will really hire new teachers with qualifications, especially in the specialization. Another option is the two years could really be given by a higher education institutions. How will the Department of Education transition this program? In 2016-2017, when we will have the first batch of grade 11, there are no students going to college. Yeah. So meaning the teachers and also the facilities of the higher education institutions will not be utilized. Yeah. So what we're looking at is 
in the transition program, I'm not so sure at transition into all, or maybe also in the institutionalization, we will be using the higher education institutions to really be the one to be offering grades 11 and 12. And another possibility is that the state colleges and universities which specialize in agriculture, in fisheries, and technology, or vocational education will also be the institutions, including TESDA-run institutions, that will be the one to be offering grades 11 and 12 because they have already teachers who have really expertise in this field. With the slow implementation of this reform, the points made out by DepEd, and full understanding of the new curriculum. The department's goal towards a better education is never ending. And the K plus 12 has become one of many keys that will unlock our door to success. I am Adrian Loretta. And I am John Daniel Taiba. And, and this, this is Albert's Notebook. Department of Education, Bernyake National High School, Philippine Science High School, Diliman Campus, Sony, Make Dot TV, Dell, the power to do more, ULEP Pathway, SM Supermall, Adobe After Effects, McDonald's Delivery, YouTube, Metro Rail Transit, and Sir Hobart the Strong.